there we go. All hooked up. Power running to the smart shunt. So right now I'm here in the camper running completely off the batteries. I just installed the app and I didn't have to do anything. Immediately it shows up. So it's connecting. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get this configured, showing my current voltage, my current draw, because the lights are on in the camper. It's three amps and uh, that seems like a lot, but uh, I think I have all the lights on. 40 watts, and this is pretty slick. <laughs> oh, this is pretty sweet, guys. Uh, I, yeah, this is sweet. It was 125 bucks. You don't have to get the really expensive $200 one, and you just do this, and you just use your phone. You don't even have to mount a display. That's all there is to it right there, and then you're done. So what I did to find the page as the settings, I just went ahead and Googled how to configure the Victron 712 with Battleborn. Even though this isn't the 712, it's basically without the display, but uh, it'll take you right to the page, which is uh, battleborn.com slash FAQ dash all dash about dash BMVS. So that is the URL. And right here, scroll down, you've got all the settings. Basically, you're going to set it to 14.4 volts, uh, 1.1 or 0.2 volts below the charging voltage of your charging device. I believe on my solar controller here it goes 14.6, so I can do 14.4. I'll research that a little later. But uh, basically what you're going to do is notice it says the amp hours is the total amp hour bank of the battery. So we're going to say 200. So we just fill in the blanks. So let's go ahead and check it out on the, the app. Let's go to settings. Let's go to battery. So battery capacity is 200 amp hours. It already had it. Charge voltage would be 14.4. All right, discharge floor is zero. The Battleborn batteries basically can be discharged all the way down to zero. So you can say zero for your discharge floor. Tail current, it says two to four percent is good. So I don't know what that means. I'm gonna go do three. <laughs> Let's do three. They said two to four. Uh, we'll do three. I don't know why they just don't tell you what it should be. Charge detection time. Three minutes. Exponent is 1.05. Charge efficiency, 99. Current threshold, 10. Time to go average period, 3. Alright, charge state, it says I'm at 98.9%. I'm not going to synchronize. My understanding is when it gets to a certain voltage, the 14.4 for example, it will automatically set this to say it's 100% charged. It will know it's 100%. It synchronizes itself automatically once you get to that charge point. So I shouldn't have to tell it to synchronize right now. That's my understanding. So that's all you have to do to set the batteries up. Now that I've entered in all the specs on this battery, it says that running these lights would last two days and 18 hours if I just ran the lights. So that's cool. It is saying I'm drawing three amps. So I am going to, just to see how this compares to what I found the other day when I turned on just one light. So all that's running is just, like I said, the radio, because uh, you can't ever completely turn it off. It does show a little different than what I was getting on the amp meter. It shows basically 0.96 instead of 0.3, which is what I was getting on the amp meter was 0.3. So is there something else I have running? Mm -hmm. 
that's the culprit right there. Still not 0.3, it's 0.6. Oh, all right, well, I bet I know what that 0.3 is. The shunt, it needs power. That stereo in standby mode was stuck in about 0.3 amps. The shunt has Bluetooth on it and all that other stuff, so I could see it sucking 0.3 amps. We're at one amp with the light on, and with the light off, with the shunt now in play, it's at 0.6. So that means we're using 400 milliamps for the light, which is about 4.8 watts, and that's about the number I came up with the other day. With everything going, the shunt, the stereo and standby, and the light, we're at 13 watts. If I turn the inverter on, we'll say 25 watts for the inverter, so that's gonna pump us up at about 40 watts. Let's click the inverter on and see what happens. There we go. It's a little more, but but close, about 10 watts off. That's about right. I had everything unplugged when I did that test. Right now, Alexa and all that stuff is connected, so I could see Alexa and all that stuff taking 10 more watts. So I got my computer running on, on wall power. I've got my TV on, I got Alexa on, I got the internet on, I got the radio on, I got the fan on. Let's turn this fan on. Say I wanted to have everything going as much as possible, minus AC. Make myself nice and comfy. Let's go ahead and turn these lights on. Alexa, set TV lights to video mode. There we go. And let's turn these lights on. All right. So we got everything on. We got lights there, we got a bathroom light on, we got a computer on power, we got the TV on, we got Alexa going, we got everything is on. Which obviously you wouldn't do this if you were running off batteries. But let's just pretend. With all this stuff on, it does say I'm sucking roughly 175 watts. So when we see this display start only changing every minute, then that's gonna be our real time. So it's gotta work its averages out before that's accurate. So I'm gonna leave all this run and I'm gonna come back here and we'll give it about, we'll give it about 15 minutes for this to start normalizing and we'll see how many hours that it would run with all this stuff going. Looks like it's settled finally. We're at 14 hours and 41 minutes at the current rate of draw. Huh, did it just go up? <laughs> All right, maybe something went down a little bit. So it's, it's, it's averages. So it has to calculate this all on averages. So it'll fluctuate. If you were being conservative and you didn't have your inverter on and you were needing to run your heater, this would easily get you through the night. These batteries, you can charge them up roughly 100 amps per hour. I got 200 amp hours worth of battery. I can charge it up at a rate 50% of that. With that in mind, where would I go from here? We're gonna see how this thing does. I can now monitor and see, you know, how much amperage am I gonna get from my car? Is it three or four amps while I'm driving? Plus the solar, will those two things get it to top off the batteries? If that will top off the batteries, then the fact that the generator is going through the converter to charge and that only gets it to about 70 or 80 percent. If I can get it to 80 percent with the generator and the solar will top off the rest because I've got the right kind of charge controller for my solar, then we're set. If it doesn't do everything I need, I am going to buy me a lithium battery charger. There is an AC outlet right here by the hot water heater that doesn't go through the inverter circuit or anything like that. Because of that, I could get just a lithium charger. One that's designed to charge lithium batteries that just plugs into an AC outlet. And I could plug a lithium charger in there. Don't even worry about the converter. Don't change the converter out or anything like that. I can get a lithium charger for like 100 bucks and not have to do anything with the converter that's in this camper have that charger in there specifically to charge the batteries when we're plugged into AC. So that should take care of everything we need to do. But I'm really hoping that between the car and my 
charge controller that is lithium compatible now. Again, remember, this is not the charge controller that came with my Geo. The first one I got was defective, and when they replaced it, they replaced it with a new one that has the Bluetooth and also supports lithium batteries, which means it charges up to the 14.4 volts. So, I'm going to just play it by ear. These batteries have been getting fully charged using AC outlet and solar. Let's just see how it does. Hopefully, this is all I need to do. So based on the time that we looked at that last night, I, I added it all up and it was said it would go until 10.50 in the morning. It is now 9.13 and it says it's got three more hours. That's with everything that was running. We're still sucking around 144 watts. So wattage went down a little bit. That's because solar is helping a little bit to offset it. There's light out right now. Also, if you have an M1 Mac, I don't know if it's just for the M1 Mac or if this is available for all Macs and for Windows, they do have this as an actual desktop application, which is kind of cool. I come in this morning and I look, and while the camper is plugged in outside and the solar was putting out 4.4 amps, the battery was only getting about one amp of current going into it. Now I had some lights and stuff on, but I'm thinking there still should be no draw off that battery because shouldn't the converter be powering these lights? No, it doesn't. <music>